What's up? Time for a interesting chat and addendum to my video, how do I get a good tech job that I actually put out a couple days ago. So of course the title is uh, ironic or I don't know, some would call it clickbait, but thankfully I dispel that clickbait within the zeroth second of the video. Um, in that my recommendation is that people not look for tech jobs. Uh, I'm not against people having tech jobs, you can have one. But uh, for people starting out, the goal is not to work for some Fortune 500 company writing software. Um, the goal is basically passive income because, you know, as, as I say in the video, I'll, I'll repeat in a different way, like software, like being able to write software, okay, is the closest thing that mankind has ever achieved to magic, okay? It really is a kind of magical spell that can do the equivalent of moving mountains and um, I think a lot of people undersell or they don't understand how valuable that can be. So I'm going to talk about what I mean. Now, I want to clarify one thing. Some people misunderstood this video to mean that I'm for what is falsely called freelancing. Okay. Now, I am for freelancing in the truest definition of the world, but a, lot, word, but a lot of people misunderstand that term to mean, oh, instead of working for a company as a wagey, as someone who is getting, you know, uh, you know, a, a W-2 in America, like an employee, I'm going to work for a company as a freelancer, all right? Now, I don't have any opinions about that. I've never done something like that. I don't know how different it is from working as a wagey, as a W-2 employee. Um, maybe there's an advantage, maybe there's not, but that's not what I'm talking about because I'm not talking about you doing exactly the same job you would work as an employee, but you're just like independent. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's better. Maybe that's worse. Some people in the comments had their own views of how that is, but that's not what I'm endorsing. I want to be totally clear. Um, what I actually endorse is, I, and I, I'm just going to say this when I, when I say that tech people, especially those even starting out undersell themselves, most money-making websites on the internet nowadays can be just a simple web page that is connecting two different APIs. You're just connecting two services, right? And what I mean by that, I mean, like the the, the site that I have, okay? So I have a site, Lindy Press. Oh, I'm, why am I typing in Greek? <laughs> Lindy Press .net, right? So this site is a glorified joining of API. Uh, APIs that give, gives me uh, basically passive income, okay? So what this site is, you can go here. Now I make these books, I typeset them. They're out of print books um, that I think, some of them are out of print, some of them aren't. I think, I think you can still get meditations and consolation. These are sometimes, uh, you can find them in print. All the other ones are definitely out of print. Um, well, maybe you can find the Book of Enoch. I'm not quite sure. Um, either way, so this site is a glorified linking of two different APIs. So Stripe, which handles all the payments, they do all the difficult stuff, you know, sales tax in some cases and all this other stuff. Uh, you know, they d hold debit card information, all that difficult stuff. And then Lulu is a company that you can, they have an API where they can print and ship books. They print the books. They decide how to bind them based on your settings. They decide where they ship them all over the world. I don't have to think about any of that because their API takes care of all of it, all the value added tax, all that other stuff, right? So this site is actually just a glorified linking of two APIs, right? And it does something that is, is novel, right? Okay, so, you know, I couldn't, I was looking for a copy of uh, Isidore of Seville's Etymologies and I couldn't find one, so I made one myself, okay? And it's not that difficult and you can buy one here yourself if you want. And this, this the software that's running on this uh, uh, server uh, is actually forked from code of a subscriber of mine who, when I was, I was, uh, you know, wanting to set up the site, he sold, he not sold it, he shared it with me. Um, and what his site does, which I think he has some kind of business um, where he does this, or I, I might be misremembering this, but his site takes like um, you can get give, give it a uh, like text message history, right? And you can print that out in a book. You want to give your wife like her text message history or your text message history or something like that, right? That's something I, I want to say that's what a site does. If it doesn't, I know that I've seen a site like that. Now, computationally, that is an easy thing to do. This is something like, okay, so you're typesetting. Like maybe you don't know LaTeX, but it's a simple thing to do. But there are even easier examples. I was talking to a um, normie friend of mine uh, normie acquaintance and what she said is you know her grandparents are hooked up with this site now all it does this is all it does is 
that you know you ha you can be a paying subscriber and what it does every week is it just sends an email it's for like creating memories for like grandchildren it like sends an email to the old people in question that just asks them like some kind of personal thing like oh you know the question in a week could be like oh you know how did you meet your spouse or uh how was it when you first learned to drive or something like that right that's the kind of it, it's very simple stuff and it just takes the input that they give and it then um you, you can put it in a book you can typeset it you can format it like it it, it basically it, computationally it's an easy site and that's the kind of stuff that i'm talking about um i will say there were there were some people who said uh you know oh you know i'm i'm people who are self-employed and they have businesses and you know, a lot of times when you are self-employed, depending on what you're doing, you can be doing lots of work. That is true, right? It might be war more work. Your work. I mean, that that's really even how I am for the stuff that I do. Uh, there's never a time that I'm really off. I'm okay with that. I'm well. I'm a little peeved by that sometimes. I do take days off, but um, uh, sometimes like weeks off. Um, but um, you know, that depends on what kind of things you're doing. There might be stuff that's like more work intensive and there's, you know, drop shipping sites that you can set up uh, pretty easily to sell people, I don't know, different things. And you basically put no work. Uh, once you set it up, there's no work involved. So that's the kind of stuff I'm recommending to people. I, I'm not, I am not saying, oh, instead of working for a business, do what a business does. Which is, I mean, the reality is, like, a lot of people in the comments, uh, again, I'm not going to scroll down. I pulled the comments up, but I'm, like, I, I'm not going to scroll down. I'm not going to read while I'm talking. But, um, you know, there are, uh, a lot of people misunderstood this to mean, do the exact same work as, that a corporation does as an individual. No, do not do that. And there are two reasons for that. Firstly, there are some things that you need massive organization for. But you don't need to participate in that. Like, if you're trying to make it as an individual, you don't need that, right? Secondly, there are a lot of things that you, you quote unquote need lots of corporations, you know, lots of people working on and lots of sub projects and stuff like that. But a lot of it shouldn't be done in the first place. Re realistically speaking, a lot of enterprise software. I mean, if you're on this channel and you care about free software, free and open source software, Unix philosophy, I don't care. I expect you already kind of have a have a feeling for this. But a lot of the software that companies write should not even exist. It's them re rewriting the wheel. They want to have their own implementation or protocol for a chat service or doing something super basic that exists, that exists in free software. Um, but I don't know. They, they want their own proprietary equivalent. And a lot of it is just reinventing the wheel. So there's a lot of stuff that you're going to be doing in companies that um, – and, and this, this actually – I've had this in the past where – there are a lot of people who are, I mean, really, think about the, the schools and the companies and the, like the people that you've known in the past year who, or the past couple of years, who have started to use things like Zoom and all this proprietary stuff that, of course, they're, they're existing equivalents that, that work well and are more extensible and stuff like that. Um, uh, but anyway, I, I don't want to ramble too much, but I will just say that the goal is not being a corporation to yourself. It is finding a need that people want. Maybe, like, no one, you, there are some needs you can create. Uh, there, there are some goods you can provide, and people won't even realize they wanted them before then. But I guarantee you, the thing about sending emails to old people, that's actually a good example. Because I will say, especially girls, okay, it is very, it, it, it is very easy to woo girls with uh, sim technologically simple things that are cute. Okay, you provide them a little service like that, that's the kind of thing that a lot of normies will get behind. Um, and so, you know, I said somewhere else in th these comments, I think it was down here, and this was less about software, but it was more about like hardware in general. Uh, I wanna say it's this comment. Um, actually, now looking at this, I'm embarrassed of it because it sounds like a motivational thing, but like, when when you like a motivational poster or whatever, but um, you know in hardware in hardware this is true as well. Like if you want to start your own shop or not even a shop if you don't want to buy a business, but if you want to be an at home computer, you know repairsman, um, it is infinitely easier than you think, right? Because most of the stuff you're going to be doing, you need, you know, you basically need this to hook up to a hard drive so you can back up data. 
like this $5 thing. And that's you making hundreds of dollars off of boomers who want to recover their data off their laptops. Like people come up to me because they know I know stuff about technology in my real life and ask me to do that kind of stuff all the time. That's the kind of thing, like that's what computer repair shops do in real life. It's the kind of thing that you can act on and, um, you know, print out flyers and do whatever you want and, you know, just do basic things that we do, like we take for granted. We as people who know stuff about technology, that's what I'm talking about. Like replacing just simple things on a computer, writing, you know, merging together just simple APIs. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about being a freelancer for a corporation. If that works for you for the time being, that's fine. Uh, but I will just say, you know, one, one thing about how, the, the one thing that, um, you know, I'm not telling anyone to quit their jobs right now. If, you're, if your boss, if your work environment is great, um, you know, that's fine. But the one thing that I think you, if you're in technology, you got to make sure that you have is free time. Free time to tinker because you're going to be able to run across things. Oh, I could do this. Oh, I really want to learn how to do this language or whatever, right? And some companies that are smart, Google is known for this. Google is known for, you know, that what they give their employees like free time to work on whatever project they want at work, right? That's a good idea. And the only thing, you know, the only job that I would quit right now was one that either, you know, makes you do like wagey humiliation rituals, obviously. Uh, of course, now it's July, so you probably have less of those. <laughs> um, but uh, so I'd quit something like that and also something that suffocates your time to such a degree that you don't have time to work on your own projects or at least tinker with things. You don't even have to call it a project. Just learn how to do things, okay? You need free time. You deserve free time if you're working in technology. That's basically your best investment, okay? Right? Um, all right, I've rambled on. I think I've said everything I wanted to. But uh, yeah, take it easy. Don't freak out. Don't And, and don't also, don't always think about the money. You know, the, there are a lot of, especially when it comes to tinkering, there are a lot of things that don't seem, you know, as long as you are doing cool stuff and you're learning how to do cool stuff, you won't necessarily see immediately how you can make money off of that. Okay. I mean, that, that was the case when I was learning LaTeX, right? I didn't think I'd have a, a, a little side hustle here. But, um, you know, the wider message is to make sure that your side hustle is not really a side hustle. You should really view it as your main hustle even if you're making a fraction of the income on it, right? That's really what I'm telling. Like, don't do, like, you are more valuable than a wage slave if you have these kind of skills, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. And startup costs are much lower because, you're again, you're not buying wood, you're not buying raw materials, you have a freaking computer, and you can write any software on it, right? That, that's what I'm talking about. Um, all right, goodbye.